Hi, I'm Peter, Peter Krupp is from Belgium, and I'm here with Father Joseph Tambi Mulupuri, right? and also our beloved friend Paul Wellington from Australia. And I'm here in the Sher Kids home in India, Andhra Pradesh, it's more south of India, and near the town of Eluru, but here is a village near to Eluru. And well, I know Father Tambi already for at least three years, and every year I meet here, I'm here, oh, we meet each other elsewhere and yeah I, I it's such a loving inspiring home where well, what we call an orphanage but for me it doesn't feel at all as an orphanage as it is in my mind so I want to know from your heart what is it that this home is all about the first and foremost I welcome you once again to this home home in India India is your second home and it is my passion, it is inborn in my heart that there should be built a home for the homeless, mm -hmm. a love for the unloved, care for the uncared. And I felt in my childhood at the age of 12 that there should be love for the children. Mm -hmm. And I had an experience with children who have no parents, children who are abandoned and unloved and unfortunate. This is how made me not an orphanage, but there should be a home for the children. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this home represents the love, love natural and love of the universe for the children who do not have anything in their lives mm -hmm. and it is more of not just caring but is liberating giving them freedom and above all love of the universe this was my intention of starting home for the parentsless and uncared and unloved okay so, actually, you are saying, also, you're sharing also how this all started. Yeah. And even part of your yeah. vision. Yes. And what is it like a typical day here in the home? Yeah, here children, they get up early in the morning, 5.30, and they have their wash. And by 6.30, they come back to the meditation, first and foremost, thanking the universe in the meditation and recalling the universal truths into their heart and followed by the morning prayers mm -hmm. and prayers for the donors who help them thanking the people who have met them in their life mm -hmm. and after that they go around 7.30 for breakfast and sometimes there is some meditation yeah. Yeah. meditation and yeah. meditation is more of they have different points to meditate mm -hmm. according to the uh, knowledge yeah. and sometimes guided meditation sometimes left to them to make meditation yeah. and sometimes like you people come and lead the meditation mm -hmm. that adds more for their uh, level of maturity connection in the soul with the universe mm -hmm. and later around 7.30 to 7.45 they have breakfast then there comes the bus to take them to the school. Around 7.45 or between 8, they go to school. And they have school from 9.45 to till evening 4.30. And they come back around 5 o'clock. And they have an hour, games mm -hmm. and sports and whatever they like. Yeah, that I can see daily. <laughs> yeah, out of yeah. their freedom. Yeah. There is no compulsory, but... They, yeah. they are into it yeah. and, and at 6.30 they have a bathing time mm -hmm. and six after 6.30 they have a small uh, prayer or uh, like a recollection mm -hmm. of a half an hour and later on they have 
uh, study and preparation for the next day and uh, they have about up to 8 pm they have study and they have their own uh, homeworks mm -hmm. and 8 pm they have a dinner yeah up to dinner they as, have as i am witness yes great food you're having here yeah Very they, good food. children need good food mm. and food with nutritional measurements yeah so they have a um, they have 8 pm they have a dinner mm -hmm. after dinner they have some relaxation sometimes recreation sometimes a small time to watch tv yeah movie okay. and around nine o'clock they come back to the study night mm -hmm. study and they have up to 9 30 to 10 pm they have study yeah and they go back to the sleep yeah so that's a weekday yeah weekend it's a little bit different more freedom yeah on weekends uh, they are more free people yeah and they have their own timetable mm -hmm. not the timetable at the home yeah and they have to make their time table yeah out of their choice mm -hmm. One may want to watch the TV, one may want to yeah. uh, wash the clothes, one may want to watch the, uh, play the games. Mm -hmm. And they have given freedom to take whenever they like to have lunch. Yeah. Yeah. They are given certain time. Mm -hmm. By 1.30 they have to finish the lunch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, tell me, how many children are here at the moment? We have 17 children. Mm -hmm. One ch two children already they have higher education. Mm -hmm. One child has selected her life mm -hmm. for the religious life. Mm -hmm. She's gone. And a boy, he has finished his 12th standard mm -hmm. and he has have a place in government mm -hmm. college. And now we have 18 children with us. Okay. Since when? What was, in which year did it all start? In 2014, mm -hmm. we have started this home. Yeah. And uh, now we reached 2019, entering yeah. into 2020. Yeah. And they are selected about at the age of seven, mm -hmm. according to the government standards. Mm -hmm. Sometimes government gives the children to us. Mm -hmm. They may be below age also. Mm -hmm. And it is by the government sometimes provide the children. It is sometimes we come across children thrown out. Yeah and not given food, not cared for. Also come from the jungle. Mostly these children. Yeah. It's my passion that I went into the forest area in search of children mm -hmm. who are not cared in the forest and I want to bring them to the world. Mm -hmm. I want to show them to the different world. Yeah. And where even, not even government enters into there. Mm -hmm. Homes. Yeah. So most of them belong to the jungle. Yeah. So they have different world. Mm -hmm. They have seen different people, mm -hmm. different cultures. The cultures that children have in the village is different from the culture that yeah. we have in the towns. Mm -hmm. So they have now accustomed to the new culture, new people, yeah. having their own culture as unique place in their mm -hmm. homes. And we prepare them to love the world. Yeah, well, that's what, what you really can feel here. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Such joy being around the children yeah. and you and, and the whole home. And it's, uh, I think everything is approved by the government, isn't it? Yes. You, you match up to every standard that the Indian government yes. demands. Yeah. We have We have to have an approval from the state government mm -hmm. as well as the central government yeah and our trust is recognized and given tax exempted mm -hmm. and it is in correlation with indian national government and state ap government mm -hmm. we have visits from government officials yeah yeah time to time yeah i even met them no. yeah mm -hmm. even the judge of local judge Mm -hmm. Jilla court judge is obliged to visit mm -hmm. whenever they like. Yeah. And we have police protection. Okay. Police, yeah. police visit to the children. Yeah. 
we have some among the government officials mm -hmm. psychotherapists oh yeah why yeah. yeah like you mm -hmm. they come they have interaction with children they find out what is going on yeah and they have an official interrogation with the workers who are mm -hmm. here and we are all interrogated and given certificate to work for the children yeah okay. but uh, government doesn't give you the funds is it it's well yeah. not really mm -hmm. therefore we are called ngos non governmental mm -hmm. organization mm -hmm. it is our part that we add something to the government mm -hmm. as it ngos it is our part to raise funds there are some projects government can mm -hmm. support but not all the ngos yeah it is certain charges that government gives then it will support yeah but like this homes mm -hmm. absolutely there is no support yeah. except there is some programs uh, they implement mm -hmm. in some homes yeah but not in this one not in this one we have not reached no. up to that stage we are in the beginners yeah so it is a little bird it has to yeah. grow so it's a i see all your passion your hard work uh, and all the love you have for the children and also the staff and i can imagine yeah this this home is being run on donations yes yeah that's quite a challenge isn't it yes mm -hmm. Every yeah day. well we have been running this house in a rented house mm -hmm. there's more burden to us yeah every month yeah every month yeah. we have 20000 rupees mm -hmm. for the house rent and the power bill yeah and we have groceries like 10000 to 15000 mm -hmm. rupees and little <laughs> gift to the workers Though yeah. they are volunteers, like the cook, cook, yeah. watchmen, yeah. and wardens, yeah, and we have to buy rice, mm -hmm. and we have to have medical care for the children, yeah, and we need to pay every year some five to six lakh rupees for the school fee and their books, mm -hmm. and they, and to me in this house, mm -hmm. everything is taken care by this house, yeah. and children have no one to support them mm -hmm. from their relatives or anybody their uncles uh, purely these children are supported by this home alone yeah. for everything therefore around every month 10000 euros mm -hmm. is exact exact budget of this house 10000 euros so like 1000 euros 1000 euros okay thousand, yeah. i understood 10000 but it's 1000 yeah. thousand. Thousand euros is yeah. perfect yeah not so extra like not less dollars yeah 1200 euros yeah. is the best way 70000 rupees yeah yeah okay yeah good and well having father joseph tambi here telling all this Well, I can testify myself. What a beautiful project! No, it's not a project. It's it's like a life mission for for all the people that that live here. It's a life mission, especially for Father Tambi. And I personally know that when donations are given here, because once at least once a year, sometimes twice, donations. True to this person, I come and give personally here. So I see with my own eyes, with my own experience, that the donations don't disappear uh, to directors or to the government. It goes directly to the children. And another thing, what I said in the beginning is these children. they know they got a second chance and they really you can really see that they are so eager to learn but they are also very happy to play <laughs> and yeah i should say if you feel like give them a chance and if you feel like giving a donation you can contact me 
Rudder Paul, and especially yes. Father Tumby. And there's also a website, probably somewhere after this video, that it will be shown. And there you can have a look of, of all of what's going on here. And if you feel like, hey, share, be part of this family, because it is really a family. Yeah. You want to have a last word? Yeah. It is, my journey has not ended. There are like these children, many in the, out in the forest. To my knowledge, around 500 children. It's very hard for them to have a meal, live alone, how to study and so on. My vision for this home, mm -hmm. my vision for these children, that they should have a small school where they are educated in soul, yeah. not only in EQ, but in IQ. I want to bring them at least 500 children to this home. That's your bigger dream. It is my bigger yeah, dream. And vision. Yeah. The yeah. world bothers about EQ, mm -hmm. but not IQ. Yeah. So I want to make sure IQ and UQ together. Like intelligent coefficient and emotional yes, coefficient. emotional coefficients. Yeah. And make them better citizens of India mm -hmm. and in wider, better citizens of this universe. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your coming here and interviewing. Thank you for all your help to this home. And thank you for all the passion and knowledge and truth you're sharing. You're welcome. Thank <laughs> you.